Hey everyone. Um, today what I want to do is I want to look at um, the last three functions in our little book, um, the library of functions. Um, these are three that are pretty important and usually ones that we're not as familiar with. Okay, so absolute value, that I know you're familiar with. But what you might not be used to is talking about absolute value as a piecewise function. And that's going to be important um, because in calculus, um, there are certain things that we want to do and we can't do them with absolute value symbols. And so we have to change that function into a piecewise. Okay, so I just want you to be aware of that notation there. Um, and also notice here that it doesn't really matter. You could have had the equal sign up here and no equal sign down there. Okay, so that part doesn't matter. Okay, so... They're telling us that the absolute value of x is negative x if x is less than 0. Okay, so basically, they're just saying y is negative x or y equals x if it's positive. Okay, so we know what this function looks like. Um, so I'm just going to put on my points. I can see that it's symmetric to the y-axis. I could fold on the y-axis and the function would fold on itself. Um, it's continuous. Not something we'll talk about in the next chapter, but I don't have to lift up my pencil when I'm drawing that function. Um, the domain. Well, we can take the absolute value of anything that we want. So for the domain, I'm going to say that it's all real numbers. Um, I could use interval notation and just write it like that. Okay. So this is clear. Let me see if I can focus it a little bit better. Okay, now we see that the if we look at the range, this function never drops below that point right there. So we know that's its minimum value is zero, and then it goes on to infinity. So it includes zero, but it's got it. We say it's unbounded on the top. Okay, end behavior. Let's look at what's happening there. Okay, so as x heads towards negative infinity. So the x values are going here. The y values are headed towards positive infinity. Okay. Um, as x heads to positive infinity, well, the function also heads to positive infinity. So this end behavior is going to have, um, it's going to be something that's very important in calculus, and we're going to have a lot of different notation for that, or I guess not a lot, but different notation for that as we go along. Okay, so let's look at the greatest integer function. Um, and this one's one, again, it's not totally difficult, but it's just weird. It's one that we just don't have as much experience with. It comes up in calculus, so we just have to be aware of it. Um, so notice this notation right here. Okay, so it looks like it's absolute value, but it has these little guys on the bottom right here. Okay, so watch for that. You're going to see that sometimes come up in homework. Um, so I kind of look at this particular function, and um, I know the definition means that it's the, the output is the greatest integer that's less than or equal to x. Um, sometimes we call this function the floor of x. Okay, another thing that I kind of know if I'm talking about the greatest integer function um, is that it always rounds down. Okay, so that's something I always keep in mind. So, Let's just kind of look at some numbers here. So let's say we're making a t-chart. And I want to put in 0.5. Okay, so let's, let's think about this. What is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 0.5? So if we round down, it would be 0. Okay, what if we had 2? Well... Oops, I shouldn't have like a little line right up there. 
Well, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to 2 is 2. What if I had 2.1? Well, the greatest integer that's less than or equal to 2.1 is 2. Okay, what if I went up to 2.9? Oops, we said that would be 2. Notice this would also be 2. Just round down to the next to the lower integer. At 3, it would jump up to 3. Okay, so let's look at negative numbers. Okay, well, if I had negative 1. The greatest integer that's less than or equal to negative 1 is negative 1. Okay, how about negative 1.2? So remember that we're always rounding down. So the greatest integer that's less than or equal to negative 1.2 is negative 2. So it's, it's kind of one of those things that's sort of weird. You got to think about it. Um, let's look at what its graph is going to look like. So the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. And if I go all the way up to 0.999999, infinitely close to 1, um, it's always going to be 0. So I'm going to have an open circle right there. OK, let's make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. Okay, then it's going to jump up, open circle. Okay, so same thing here. Okay, so it's just one of those functions that you kind of sometimes have to think about because we don't see it very often. Um, okay, so let's look at domain and range. Well, we could put any number that we want in for the domain. We could take the, you know, do anything that we want there. So I'm going to say that it's domain. I'll come back up here. Let me get that on. Is going to be um, all real numbers. Okay, so I could just use the double bar R to indicate the set of all real numbers. And the range is only going to be integers. Now, you would think that if the domain, if real numbers are R, that the range would be I for integers, but it's not. It's Z. And we kind of have a double bar Z. So that's something to kind of note, that that means all real integers. Or I shouldn't say, I can just say all integers. OK, so end behavior. As x gets bigger and bigger, y gets bigger and bigger. OK, so as x heads out, or let's do the, the negative first. Okay, if we go this way, as x gets smaller, the y value gets smaller. As x gets bigger, the function also gets bigger. Okay, so we're not talking about continuity here, but this function does not have continuity. It jumps in between. That's going to be something that's important for us later on. Okay, and then the last one that we got to do is one that I don't think that you've seen before called the signum function. Um, this is kind of a weird little function that we want to think about. Okay, so it tells us that the function is the y value is the absolute value of x divided by x as long as x does not equal 0. Okay, everybody know why x cannot equal 0? Yeah, we can't divide by 0. So they give us another case, and they say, OK, it's equal to 0 if x equals 0. OK, so let's think about how this thing works. OK, so if I have, like, negative 10, well, the absolute value oops, of negative 10 over 10 is going to be negative 1. Okay, what if I put in negative 1? Well, the absolute value of negative 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So we're going to see that that pattern will hold. So whatever number, negative number we put over here, 
we're going to get negative 1 out. It wouldn't matter if it was a decimal. It would be the same thing. So we're going to go, it's always going to equal negative 1. I could have used my ruler. But there's going to be a circle right there because it can't, because it can't equal 0. But we know that if x is 0, it's 0. So we just get a dot there. Okay, what happens if we put in the positive numbers? Okay, so what if x was oops, what if x was 5? Well, the absolute value of 5 over 5 is just 5 over 5, which is positive 1. So no matter what number we put that's positive, greater than 0, we're going to get out a 1. So, got an open circle there, and then it doesn't look like that. Okay, so our domain, well, we can put any number that we want into this piecewise function, even zero, because they defined it. So we could say it's all real numbers. I could use interval notation. I could use, you know, however I want to do that. Now the range. There's only three values that can possibly come out. Um, we can get negative 1, 0, or 1. And that's it. Okay, so let's look at n behavior. As, I'll put it down. Well, I'll just talk about it. As x goes to negative infinity, this function goes to negative 1. Okay, as x goes towards positive infinity, the function goes to positive 1. And that is it. Okay, so fill in your little books, um, and we'll see if we need to go over any later on. All right, bye-bye.